Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm gonna, gonna do a quick battle plan uh, for Tuesday, November 19th. And I'm gonna do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And uh, again, I've been doing this for over a week now. I'm gonna start here on the daily time frame, just so everyone can see what's going on in the big picture, because what's going on in the big picture can help us in our smaller time frame uh, day trades. And I think it's important to understand the current market environment that we're in. And so I kind of thought to myself, and I've been saying this in the trade plans, that this is one of the most unusual uh, uptrends that uh, is starting here, right? One of the most unusual uptrends I have ever experienced, right? The slowest grind that I've ever seen. And I didn't have any stats to back it up until now. I saw this on Twitter yesterday. It says, the S&P 500 has now gone 28 trading days without a consecutive decline. The longest streak in eight years. So that finally, that confirms my feeling about this market, that this is like painstaking the way, and you can even see if you go to normal candles here, there hasn't been uh, two except, that was the last one right there, It was which is October 1st. And then since then, we haven't had two red days. And that is obviously, that hasn't happened in eight years. This is an insane, slow, and, and that's the key thing here. It's like it's an incredible slow grind, right? And it's it's making it a little bit difficult uh, to trade. And I went short in my stock options here at 3,100. So I'm currently taking some heat and I have plenty of time to recover, right? Stock, that's the beauty about stock options. Uh, but I need a market sell-off so freaking bad. I would say, I thought 3,100 was it. I'm now officially saying, like, this has to be it. Right? I mean, this is, I mean, and just technically speaking, right? Good news is that we we had, uh, we did have a little bit of negative, to, you know, some of the headlines were negative uh, in the China trade talks. So it'll be interesting uh, to see what happens there. And that's kind of what's pushing this market higher is we're having quite a bit of, positive fundamentals so i'm just ready like even just come i mean 3100 you know would be nice just cycling back to there which i think uh i mean that's the kind of the reasonable place but the big level would be right in this 3050 and then obviously the big one right which i don't know if we'll make it this week but the big one is coming back uh to 3000 right so with that said obviously we're just right at the top there at all time high moving here to the 15 day 15 minute plot chart you can see this extremely low grind uh higher lows higher right this this uh higher higher highs and higher lows so 15 day 15 minute plot chart going to make this fairly quick this is not the best structure but uh if this market goes higher i'll likely hold off trading if this market continues to break above all time high that 2775 you can i'm not saying that you can't look for opportunities up there you can do some michael perigo wizardry as far as some trend lines and some fibs and you got a plus 0.5 you got a plus 1 where you can look for some change control sell triggers I'll likely just hold off and I'll look elsewhere, just kind of giving you my opinions up there. I like trading where there's structure to the left that just increases the odds of success, but you can still do, obviously, whatever you want to do. Just be mindful. I would say it's a lower probability trade when you have no structure to the left, but that doesn't mean you still can't look uh, for opportunities. If you if that's in your plan, stick to it, right? Now, if we go lower, we have a very obvious first level of context, which is right into that negative 0.5. What used to be resistance, resistance, breakout, support today, right? So that's kind of the logical first place for target and support for these bears. And But I also really like this level for a possible breakout. These bears finally get some damage. This is likely the, this is the line in the sand, at least in the short term. If these bears can start breaking that level and then hold lower highs, that's the key. Breakout, lower highs, quarter deviation for mental stop. And this is touch brackets or traditional futures. Quarter, uh, quarter deviation for mental stop, and then quarter deviation for first TP, and then you can lock and trail. Here's the big target for tomorrow, that 3,100, right? 3,100 used to be resistance. You can see why I thought this was it. And then, of course, we had that move right there. But you can see how we had resistance, 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 breakout, and then more times than not, before, and I'm not saying this can't continue to surge, but more times than not, before you see the next big surge, price will cycle back to what used to be resistance and, and cycle back to where the breakout happened. Price just likes to move in a very, uh, it's kind of, that's I would 
can kind of consider this uh, a spike and uh, spike and ledge pattern, right? So that's the big, 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 big target for either tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, or Friday. Hopefully, I mean, I can't imagine us not at least cycling down into here by Friday. And this would qualify for me, kind of in this level here, for first buy triggers. And there will be structure for negative one and halves and or negative two plays if you want to look. Obviously, if we're dumping down here, volatility is going to really, really spike higher. That well, when volatility goes higher, prices move faster. And so there will be opportunities down here, but I would be quick and nimble on anything that you do. NQ is very similar, but one thing about NQ is you'll notice value rate low and negative 0.5 are lining up exactly the exact pretty much the exact uh, same level. It's also lining up with some good structure. So what does that tell you? That is a great place for a possible target uh, for that 80% rule. Already price is trying to get back inside. So I wouldn't sell just yet. I would continue to wait for a little bit more volume and a little bit, see if you can't find some decent pullbacks. And again, this is touch brackets and traditional futures. So I like, we share, I like sharing all of the opportunities. Take what you like, drop what you don't, right? And uh, this may happen during the London session or early morning, but if you can catch it, that's a decent target there. Um, this right here would qualify for first buy trigger, and then you'd want to make sure it's quick, okay, because you don't want to get ran over. Say the big, big target definitely for this week is coming back into this big consolidation level. Lots of POCs there, a negative one, and that's kind of my favorite place down into here. Obviously, there's huge demand there, right? And so I can look for higher low buy triggers. Slash YM, very similar to ES, so really not much else to talk about there. And then we come to a chart that actually has some pretty dang good structure. See the difference, right? I really, really, really like this chart. It makes it a lot simpler to trade. And that high right there is actually a yearly high. It's not an all-time high. So even if it does break 13.6, there's actually still long, long, long-term uh, structure. But uh, 1,600 has been, if this market goes higher, 1,600 has been an insane, insane magnet. So that would qualify for first buy trigger. If it breaks, or sorry, sell trigger. If it breaks, obviously, we have good structure overlapping that plus one. If we go lower, here's kind of the first, and then we have the second there at negative one. And then if it really dumps, there will be structure down here for negative one and a half and or negative two plays if you want to try for some scalping uh, higher lows. Obviously, volatility will be strong but there's structure down there to do that, right? So you can see the big difference compared to a chart like this compared to a chart like this, right? So I can't wait for ES to finally sh do finally build structure like this. That's where our best trading days lie. And that's where you gotta capitalize, right? And so don't forget, we also have deviations on the four major uh, Forex pairs. Okay, we also have deviations in value area on crude oil. This one's empty for anything else that you want to trade. So there's nine charts to trade. There's always action somewhere. Message me if you have any questions. Take pictures of all of your trades and post them in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.